Hey, I'm Javad. I've been building financial models for 30 years. Five startups, four continents, multiple term sheets, multiple rounds of funding, one exit. I have an MBA from Columbia. I'm a fellow society of actuaries. My first degree is computer science. I work for Goldman in London, for Anderson Worldwide in Karachi, pitched to Sakura Mitsui Bank in Tokyo. One would think with this pedigree, with this background, with this education, I would get financial modeling. But you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised at all the mistakes we made while building models for the teams and startups I worked for and with. I wish there was a list, something that sat me down and said, Javad, do this, do not do this. But 16 years of searching for videos across YouTube, I couldn't find one. So we decided to build one. One that you could walk through, one that would help you avoid making the mistakes that I made, one that focuses essentially on the mindset. You get the mindset right, and there's a reasonable chance that a gorgeous, absolutely good-looking model will flow out of the work that you're putting in. Get the model wrong and there's an equally reasonable chance that you'll go around in circles. After all, what is a model? A model is a static snapshot of a state in time. How do you add value to it? How do you make it come alive? How do you make it a valuable, important, key part of your day. That is what these nine tips will help you do. One, build it to bin it. The first pass of your model, the very first shot at documenting, understanding and modeling the problem is likely to be off. There may be something wrong with your assumptions, maybe something off with your parameters, maybe the outlook that you're using to build the model is disconnected from reality. But that's all right, don't worry about it. We've all gone through the same thing, we've all made the same mistakes. Use this first pass, your first attempt, to get a better sense of the business, of the context you're trying to build. And if the model allows you to do that, and still gives you incorrect, off, inaccurate, iffy answers, that's perfectly fine. The objective of the model is twofold. One, obviously, is to give you answers to the questions you're looking for, but two is to help you better understand the underlying business, help you better understand your thought process. If you understand this one specific aspect, you wouldn't mind going through a couple of iterations of building models that improve upon each edition, each iteration, each version of themselves. Very few of my plan A's worked on the first pass. Very few of your first passes of models are likely to work. Does that mean you shouldn't build them? No. All that means is that you should try and work through them as early, as fast, as quickly as easily as possible. The objective of a business is to build a business. It's not to build models. So do what you need to do with the models you're building, get the answers you're looking for, and then move on. Don't spend too much time on them. Once you're done, pin them and start afresh. Fresh starts are always better than remodeling an existing exercise. They're just like houses. So start afresh. Fresh starts are better. Two, build models from a founder's perspective, not investors. The investors don't mind. Think about this for a second. As, in, as, as founders, as founders, we make tactical decisions almost on a daily basis. Wouldn't it be nice to have a model that showcases how we think, how we approach, how we design solutions to challenges and problems we face? Investors would love to see that. There's, there's another way of saying the same thing. Numbers tell great stories. Figure out what your story is and then tell it using numbers. Growth in a down year, scale, new servers, new employees, a new office. What's the story? I don't know. Build a model that tells that story. Now for a second, take a step back and think it about think about it from an investor's perspective. 
financial statements are a key part of our planning, budgeting, thinking, fundraising and investment process. So they are a necessity. But it's far more easier to take a model that tells a story, a model that showcases our thinking and link that to your financial statements than it is to do it the other way around. Nobody, no investor on the planet would love to see, would like to see, would want to see a plain bland set of financial statements that have no soul. Stories give statements a soul. Find out what the soul of your statement is. And once you find it, build it. Three, use sub models. Simplify your thinking. Take a complex problem and break it down into smaller sub problems. Here's an example. You want to do a revenue forecast for your business. Now, what does that involve? You need, think about this for a second, you need a model for your pipeline, for your sales lead. You need a model for conversions of the traffic that comes in, how many convert to placing an order. You need a model for your order size. You need a model for customer attention. You need a model for growth. That's five models in total. If you go back 30 years to the 30 year younger Jawad, so 30 year younger Jawad was more likely to take these five models, plug them into one cell. But then the same 30 year younger Jawad was also likely to come back a week later, look at the cell and wonder, what happened here? What did I do? What was I thinking? So don't do that to yourself. Rather than building a complex cell, a complex formula, a complex model that could easily be broken into five sub-models, build the five sub-models and then hook them together like Lego pieces. This is a far better approach. Now sometimes people think that simpler is not better. Take any field, forget financial modeling for a second. I run 10Ks on a regular basis. One of the first things our coaches teach us when it comes to running is to learn to run slow. Before you can run fast, you have to learn to run slow. Before you build complex models, you have to learn to build simpler models. Simpler models are easier to explain, they're easier to understand, they're easier to trace, they're easier to debug. Complex models, on the other hand, and I say this as someone who's been building models for 30 years, complex models, on the other hand, often are a sign, are a manifestation of not understanding the problem, of not understanding the context. And if I may be bold enough to say this, even deeply ingrained insecurities. So don't let complexity in your models give away the game. Build simpler models, use sub-models, hook them together like Lego pieces. Use that to tell a much more powerful story. Four, build in dynamism. Think of a model as a waterfall. There's stuff happening at the top. Does it flow all the way to the bottom? Now this requires two things. One, to build a dynamic model, you must identify the moving pieces, the parameters that are likely to change. So once you identify them, segregate them, put them in a separate section of your model. You can put them on the top, put them on the side, put them in a different tab, but segregate, identify them and segregate them. Now, once you've done that, you need to make sure, and this is gonna take a little bit of time, a little bit of extra time, but invest that time to make sure that your model is dynamic. If you change any of these parameters, the changes flow just like a waterfall all the way from the top to the bottom. Easier said than done. It's quite common when you're in a rush, when you need to get that set of numbers out, it's quite common to hard code values, quite common to use an existing template, quite common to pick a structure which is very difficult to extend. So, Take a step back when you start building the model. Take a step back. Think for a second about what are the choices I can make today that will make it easier for me to extend this model? What, what would make it easier for me to build this into a more dynamic structure? Now, why is this important? 
A key part of the model building exercise is stress testing. What if analysis? Scenario analysis. If you've built a dynamic model where there is this set of parameters at the top and you can change these set of parameters and see the impact flow all the way to the bottom, it's very easy, very simple for you to link this model to a data table. A data table makes it possible for you to compare two separate sets of parameters against each other. You want to compare conversion rates with growth. You want to compare order size with profitability. You want to compare traffic and click-through rates side by side. And you want to evaluate the impact of different values of these six parameters, two at a time, on your PNL, on your profitability, on your cash levels. Our data table will help you do that. But a prereq, a requirement for all of this to happen is to have a dynamic model. A model where if you change the set of parameters at top, the impact flows through. If you have this, take this set of parameters, take the model that flows through, link that to a data table, and presto. You have a really powerful tool for asking simple questions. What if? What if this happens? You have more than two parameters. You want to look at three, four, five, six parameters and assess their impact on revenues, on PL, on cash, on profitability. Sure, take a look at Monte Carlo simulation. Now that sounds exotic, sounds like a bit of rocket science, sounds like a bit too far fetched for an ordinary model builder, but it's not. There's a bit of terminology. There are a couple of items that you need to understand, maybe some relationship with equations and Excel simplifies that to a great deal for you. You'd be surprised how simple that is. So give it a shot. Build in dynamism in your models. Invest that extra time. Give yourself the flexibility to build an extendable model. You won't regret it. Five, calibrate your models to the real world. Look, as founders, we live in two worlds. One is this imaginary world that exists in our heads like castles in the air that only we can see, that the world can't see. The other is the real world, the world that exists here on the ground. Now what you need to do as a model builder is to build a bridge between this imaginary, this world that only you can see and nobody else in the world can see. Link this world to the real world. How do you do that? You do that by calibrating your model using real world data. Let me give you an example. You building the cost structure for a back office in Karachi. Well, cost base from New York or DC or LA or even Dubai is not gonna work in Karachi. You building the business plan for a digital insurance startup in Pakistan. Okay, uh, numbers and results and tools and techniques and metrics from Indonesia and Malaysia are not going to work. You need to find local data. They may give you some direction, they might give you a sense of how things work and play out in the long run, but you still need local data. So own your data. Make sure you have good data. Your models are only as good as the data you've plugged into them. You've set the right screens, the right filters for the data you use in your models, your models will be credible. You've heard of lazy thinking? There is also lazy data. Avoid lazy data, use real world data, build the bridge between the two worlds, the imaginary non-existent visual world in your head and the real world that exists on the ground, build that bridge with real data.